So we know the stock market's not the economy, but how is the economy doing? In Washington, D.C., we got a little bit of a glimpse uh, of that and maybe the K-shaped recovery that so many people are talking about. Maybe that case was sort of made today. We had Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and Fed Chair Jay Powell giving different takes, I would say, on where we are and where we are heading. Let's bring in Brian Chung for the details on this. Is that fair, Brian? Different takes from these guys? I think it is fair. And when we talk about the commentary from Fed Chairman Jay Powell, in addition to the Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin, who were testifying in front of the Senate Banking Committee today, uh, we have to acknowledge that we stand at an inflection point, which might explain some of the diverging viewpoints on where we stand in this economic recovery. So Fed Chairman Jay Powell, for his part, saying that we can both acknowledge the progress that's been made in the economy so far, but also acknowledging that we have a lot left to go with tens of millions of people still out of jobs. But he did say that the lion's share of the recovery so far, even if it is slowing, does owe itself to fiscal policy, specifically the CARES Act that was passed back in March, which means whether or not we'll get another package depends largely on the uh, political appetite to get another round done with the COVID cases surging. And we did hear breaking news during that hearing this morning that there could be that $908 billion package that could be pushed through this lame duck session before the next administration takes place. The, the Fed chairman was asked for some commentary based off of the framework of the details that we had learned about early this morning, and he appeared to have an optimistic view of what that would look like. Here's what he told the Senate Banking Committee this morning. It sounds like you're hitting um, a lot of the a lot of the areas that that could definitely benefit from help, and and um, some of the areas that are these, these are areas that are going to be experiencing uh, a challenging winter. So and a challenging winter indeed with a number of businesses having to close. We've already seen a number of those restrictions in corners of the country where businesses cannot operate outdoors any longer. Now, of course, the question is going to be whether or not the Fed will do more. They have one more policy setting meeting in December. And of course, the Treasury and the, and the Fed continuing to work through that political battle over whether or not to keep those liquidity facilities open past December 31st, which have backstopped a number of markets and offered uh, loans to state and local governments in addition to small and medium sized businesses. The update on that status is that they will close most of them, at least as of December 31st. Uh, Brian, I don't know if you had a chance to see this. Mitch McConnell apparently, uh, just before we started at three o'clock, had indicated there may be an opportunity to bring Judy Shelton back before uh, the, the Senate for a vote. Is this real? Well, as they say, Adam, I mean, it's never over until the fat lady sings. And in this case, the fat lady won't sing until inauguration of the Biden administration next year, which means that in theory, the nomination for Judy Shelton again President Trump's nominee to join the Federal Reserve uh, actually won't die until that point in time. Now, of course, the numbers don't look very good, especially with Mark Kelly from Arizona, the Democrat, coming into office after that special election tomorrow. That would mean that he would replace the incumbent Republican who is Martha McSally. That means that's one less seat that the GOP has to work with. Now, this is a major deal when you consider that there are already three Republicans that have stated their intention to vote against Judy Shelton, that being Mitt Romney of Utah, Susan Collins of Maine, in addition to Lamar Alexander of Tennessee. So the numbers likely aren't there, but of course, anything could happen. Recall, for example, that the Judy Shelton vote that happened last week was sunk because two Republicans couldn't be in the Senate chamber physically because they were quarantining for the coronavirus. Now, if it were the case that Democrats had to go through the same thing because Democratic senators ended up getting COVID and had to quarantine, that could change the numbers, which might explain why Mitch McConnell might be saying that it's technically not over until it's over. But again, Adam, as I want to illustrate here, the numbers don't appear to favor her nomination for the time being, but it's never over until it's over. And that's going to do it for Brian Chung. Your hit is over. Great to see you. <laughs>